There are a lot of things that divide us. Where we live, how we vote, what we listen to. And do I even need to mention sports teams? Because some of y'all are crazy. Except for me, because my team is going all the way. Yeah, baby. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, division. That's one of the reasons Paul wrote a letter to the church in Corinth to remind them that faith isn't built on the wisdom of others, but on the power of God. It takes a lot of people to build a church, but Jesus, he is the foundation. And there's so much more that brings us together than tears us apart. The church is a place for everyone. So it's time to stop the division and start the multiplication. If we wanna be a house united. Well, good morning and welcome to uh, First Orlando. Thank you for being a part in the room and those of you on the stream. It's great to have you. We welcome you today. You know, listening to this moment Danny was sharing with us about how many families and how many lives have been affected through our Center for Pregnancy, through also One More Child, it, it's just mind-boggling that we get to be a part of something like that. And, and as Irma said, there's a place. I think probably if Paul could step into this room today, he would, stay, he would say to us, would you please grow up? That's it. Would you please grow up? The answer for a house divided is grow up. Now think about it. For those of you that have small children, for those of you who were once a small child, for the rest of you, I don't know what to say about you, but do you remember when you were a small child, everything revolved around you? Remember? Everything revolved around you. If you didn't get your way, if you didn't get your toys, if you didn't get food, it's not good. And what about dependency on others? Totally dependent couldn't feed yourself. You couldn't do anything for yourself. So think about what Paul is saying. Grow up. He compares the church in Corinth to infants. And he tells them, guys, we got to grow. This is what we find in the third chapter of 1 Corinthians. If you've got a Bible, open it there. If you've got your phone or you've got an iPad or some way to do it, if you're on the stream, you may have access to a computer. Just get somewhere where you can look at a few verses with us. This is a series through the letter we call 1 Corinthians, and it's just so practical. This is as simple and as practical as it can be. So if I had to point to the problem in the church in Corinth, I would not point outside. Yes, they were in a Greek culture. Yes, there was a temple right up above them that had a thousand prostitutes who would come down and work the city. Yes, immorality was accepted and encouraged by everyone. But that wasn't the problem. The problem wasn't what was happening on the outside. It's what was happening on the inside of the church. In fact, the way I would say it is this. We've been more concerned, and I'm talking about we, not just here, but collectively the church. We've been more concerned about the world around us than the immaturity in us. That's why there's a stroller on the platform. It represents people who need other people, but need in depending on. It represents those who have not grown up. And we're going to add a few more things to it in just a second. But I want us to, I want us to go to the Scripture, and there's really two things that I want you to notice. All right? Number one, you have to assess who are you. And by that I mean, are you just a mere human or are you something spiritual? And it, it'll make sense when we read it in a minute. Who are you? The second question, where are you? God has a place for you. He's got a field that he says we're all to work in. He's got a place for you. So where are you? And then the last would be just, so what do we do about it? But I want you to read with me starting verse 1. Chapter 3, but our brothers could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. 
I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you're not ready for it. You're still of the flesh. For while, while there is jealousy, strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? That's interesting he uses that term to describe Christians that are not aware of the spiritual reality that should be happening in them. So let me just say this. If you're in this room and you've never put your faith in Christ, and you've never trusted Him, you've never found a church, you've never plugged in, you're on the stream, and that would describe you, this message really is for the church. But it is for you as well. It's just we apologize for blaming you for the country. We apologize for blaming everything around us for the way things are going. Listen, the greatest need in this country is for the church to stand up and be the church. Quit being infants and be the adults that God called us and created us to be. We're not merely human. There's something powerful that resides in each one of us. And so he calls us to that. How many of you are having a birthday today? Anybody got birthdays today? I know, I know Kirk, who serves. You got a birthday today? Happy birthday. I'm not going to ask you how old. Who else has a birthday? Mac, you got one? I'll go ahead and tell you, Mac's 85 today, so it's so good to, to have him in the room. No, he's not. Maybe feels like it, but anybody, any other birthdays? Got anybody? Okay. This country, and especially our culture, just knows how to celebrate birthdays. I'm telling you, I've watched a change when our kids were little. When they turned one, it was pretty much a, hey, here's a little cupcake. Happy birthday. You know, some gifts and things. Now, we're renting out Disney. <laughs> I mean, it's like... What happened? They're one years old. They don't know anything. They're not going to remember this. And we wait, we're spending how much on this birthday? We've just, it's unbelievable. Don't you wish the church had a way to celebrate spiritual growth the way we do physical growth? Wouldn't it be awesome if we got excited when somebody was able to grow in their faith enough to do something that God told them to do and they've never been able to do it. That's what Paul is saying. So I'm going to put some things up here that I want you to do something. I want you to find yourself in one of them, okay? And these are modes of transportation. If the parking lot were filled this morning with the mode of transportation that corresponds to your spiritual age, what would we have in the parking lot today? <laughs> Just think about it. What would, he, what would we have? Because every one of these correspond to a physical age of your life. In fact, there's one we need to make sure it's, yes, right here. There's a time in every one of us we're infants in Christ. That's the term he uses. We're babies in Christ. We don't understand things. We, we just know we belong to Him, and we start a growing process. So the big question is, are we growing? Are there changes happening? And you say, well, well, how would you know? What about your marriage? Is it better? What about your relationships at work? Are they better? What about your dating relationship? Is it better? What about just the evidence all around you? Does it really speak that you are growing? And what I wrestle with is, why hasn't the church figured out a way to really celebrate growth? Or maybe this, why haven't we grown? I mean, Paul said, by now you ought to be eating something other than drinking milk. So, for every one of us, we got two things happening in the room today. Some of us are chewing on this, and some of us are drinking this. And one of them is simply 
what you first drink when you know Christ and come to know Him. You need to be grounded in your faith and you understand things. But all of a sudden, there's something called meat where you're going a little further, you're understanding a little more, and all of a sudden, it's becoming a lot more interactive. So why don't we have more growth? I, I, I sat down and wrote down some things. Number one, we have confused something. We have confused that growth is information, not transformation. Let me explain. We think the way you go from a stroller to a tricycle is you're able to recount the books of the New Testament, all 27 of them. And if we can teach our people every book and know how to recite them, we got it. No, we don't. Or, hey, I know how you go from that, that to that, you know, to the bicycle. You know the kings of the Old Testament and the dates when they served. No. For a long time, the church has been focused on information. The Bible is focused on transformation. It's all about the change that happens in you, not just stuff that we learn or that we hear. Second thing is, we value showing up over serving. Think about it. Sometimes we pat ourselves on the back because, hey, I made it. I made it to church three times this month. Three times I was there. You know what? That's awesome. But what are you doing? It's not about just showing up. And it never has been about just showing up, but somehow we've traded that. So therefore, we have devalued what really helps us grow, and that's to serve. Third thing, (laughs) there's virtually no accountability for what we say, think, or do. As a Christian, as a part of the church, we say things, we do things, we post things, we respond. I mean, everything we do, it's like there is no accountability. And yet we know that's a part of the fabric of the church. I think these things have contributed to it, but it really doesn't matter how or why. What matters is something's got to change. And I just want you to notice how he says it. He says, it's for this reason there's divisions is because you're still infants. You're not growing. And you're not where you need to be. And as long as you're not where you need to be, you're going to be divided. You're going to line up behind everybody else. So, are we willing to eat this? Are we willing to say, you know what, I'm tired of this milk. I I really want to know Him. And I want to go further with Him. And I want to walk in the Word. I want this to make a difference in my life every day. That's what going from the milk to the meat is all about. Second thing, where are you? Are you in your place? God has a plan, and He's got a place for you. He's got a plan, and He's got a place for you. In other words, every one of us who are Christians, every one of us who are believers, there's a place for us. And Paul says, God's got this field, and we all have a part to play and a role to play. Are you where he wants you to be? So let's read the next part of this. It starts in verse 5. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither is he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. We are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Now let's talk about that just a second. Man, Paul just says, Apollos, myself, we're just servants. We're just doing what God gave us to do. And I'm not better than Apollos. He's not better than me. In fact, there's no one servant better than another. We're just doing what God called us to do. Now, I want you to think about something as you listen to what Paul is saying. In the church and in the kingdom of God, we have forgotten that every part matters. Every place matters in God's field. There's not one servant that's better or more important than another servant. And what Paul is trying to go against and counter is why you guys are following this guy and following that guy. And fo- We're all the same. We're all the same. 
Think about it. I grew up in the church thinking that if you got on the platform, you mattered more than if you didn't. Until I remembered and met some ladies who rocked the babies in the nursery and realized if it weren't for them, we couldn't even have church. They were the most important ones in my opinion. And I would go back to the nursery, literally. Take time out in a service before it started or as it's starting. And I'd walk back to the nursery and I'd go in and say, ladies, I want you to know how much I appreciate you. And I want you to know, you'll never, you, people don't know you're, even, you're here unless they have a child and they don't see you and you're not on the platform. But I'm telling you, God knows you're here and I want to thank you because you matter. You are important to this church. And you know what I believe? They're just as important as I was. Just as important. And guess what? A lady who is spending time or a man who's spending time helping us with the children Rarely does a six-month-old baby look at them and go, I just want to thank you for being a faithful, faithful servant. I want to thank you for using your gift to help me. They never hear that. But his word says it. And so what Paul is trying to get through to them is, guys, quit and put, put, putting one of us up here. and the re No, we're all the same. In fact, the way I would say it is this. God doesn't have any celebrities. Only servants. There are no celebrities in God's field. And he said, you quit putting them in that chair. They don't belong in the chair. Only Jesus belongs in the chair. God just has servants, so you're not a celebrity. I'm not a celebrity. We're all simply servants. Here's what's interesting. Many of you are following this outbreak of the Spirit of God at Asbury University in Kentucky. And I was reading, uh, and I've been reading a lot and following a lot. We've got members who are there. We're getting, I'm getting videos. Uh, I had one of our pastors go because I just, I wanted somebody to go and just walk in that place and experience it and see what God was doing and what we could learn. And so he came back and you're going to hear from him, from him soon. This man that studies revival, he studied revivals for years. That's been his life calling is to study great awakenings. He made a comment about what's happening at Asbury University that I thought was very intriguing this is what he said there are no celebrities there there are no celebrities there he said you don't know who those kids are that get up and read scripture you don't know who those people are that get up and speak a word you don't know who those people are at the altar you don't know who's on the stage and who isn't no celebrities there in fact Carrie Job posted that she went to the auditorium she walked in, sat down, was overcome by the Spirit of God. No one knew she was there. She said, I didn't go to get on the platform. I didn't go to be known. I, I came to see him. And I just think there's something refreshing. And then I heard, and one of the most refreshing things is, Tucker Carlson with Fox News wanted to go and do a, a, a live report from the campus. And Asbury University faculty, the president, told him, no, you're not welcome here. To which Tucker Carlson said, thank you. That lets me know this is the real deal. Because it's not about a reporter. It's not about media. It's not about publicity. It's about God moving among students Amen. and others. I just think it's amazing. No celebrities. In fact, let me show you verse 7. Go back to verse 7. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything. But it's only God who gives the growth. So what he's saying is, no, we're, we're not a celebrity. And guess what? God is the one who makes it work for every one of us. If you've ever gone and served anywhere, if you've ever done anything for the Lord and it actually worked, it wasn't you that made it work. And by the way, and it's not you that's going to make it fail. The only way it fails is because you never said yes. You never made room and said, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. That's the only way it fails. When you say, God, I'll do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not sure. But I know this is what you want me to do. And you do it. I mean, just think about what you heard from Irma. At the Pregnancy Center, there's tremendous need. 
You say, man, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I've ever done anything like that. Well, let me tell you, if God tells you to do that, do it. Because it won't be you that's making the difference. It'll be God that's making a difference. Quit taking glory from God. We are not celebrities. We are servants of an almighty God. And if anything good happens, give him the praise. I got this text today. Somebody was up there in Asbury. This is what they sent back. Just let it sit wherever it lands. There's only a piano player, a guitar player, and a single drum. The chairs are hard. The interior of the building is ugly. The lights don't dim. No one's serving donuts. Not a single smoke machine. No fancy lights. No timers. No perfect productions. No leader. No teams. No hierarchy. No competition. No kids class. Nobody greets you in the parking lot. Literally, no structure whatsoever. Apparently, the only thing needed to attract people to God is God. So, does that mean that having the lights are wrong and having the smoke machines are wrong and having kids stuff? I mean, no. It just means that's not the secret sauce. That's not what makes a day worth celebrating. The only thing that makes these days work is God himself. And that's why the praise belongs to him. If anything we do gets in the way, God help us. That ought to be an encouraging word because it means he can use you. He can use me. He can use any of us. No celebrities. It's God doing it. In fact, look what God says. This is one of the most shocking verses that you'll read in the New Testament because you'll never see God referred to in this way. Let me show it. For we are God's, say it with me, fellow workers. Do you know what that means? Co-worker, co-laborer. You mean Paul actually believes that the creator of the heavens and the earth is my co-worker? Yeah. He's right there working with you. He's right there beside you. Because he's the one who made you. He's the one who created you and gave you a gift. And he wants you to use that gift. And he's going to be right there with you to help you. And by the way, he's going to work through you. Now, I don't know if that hits you in, in a way. I just read it and thought, my goodness, God is actually my co-laborer? Have you ever had a co-worker? I mean, have you ever had somebody you, had, you were teamed up with on a project? I, I've had things, you know, like whether it was in seminary work or education or whether it was a job, and I've had a co-worker. I always, man, I felt like, gosh, I'm not going to, I got to do my part. I don't want to let my co-worker down. I want to make sure I'm, he's not pulling all the weight or she's pulling all the weight. I want to make sure that I'm contributing. How would you feel if it, you knew it was God helping you? So just get this. Who are you? You're a child of the king who was intended to be spiritual and intended to find your place in God's field, in God's building. And God will help you and he'll be there with you to make it work. The only problem is you got to grow up to find it. you got to grow up to realize it. So I've got two questions for you as I close. Number one, where are you? Which one of these? Which one best pictures you? You say, well, David, is the bicycle the last thing? Nope, there's another one. You get the keys. You get the keys. These are the keys to a Ram pickup that I happened to drive this morning to church. When God gives you the keys, that's when you know. God, thank you. But you don't give keys to somebody who's on a bike. You don't give keys to, (laughs) please, not to someone on a tricycle. Let's just be honest. This is church. Let's confess. How many of you drove underage before you should have? Raise your hand, and I'll be the first. Okay, how'd that work out for you? Man, I had a truck. It was my pride and joy. I'd saved my money, $300, and I bought it. By the way, drove it three years and sold it for $300. I did all right on that deal. I loved that truck, but I drove it before I was supposed to. 
And I invited these two girls to come over and go on a ride with me. I go around the corner. The, I didn't know the door latch wasn't working properly on the passenger door. One of these girls goes rolling into somebody's yard. I backed up. I said, come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. She got in. She's scratched from the top all the way down, pulled her hair out up here. And this is what I said to her. Do not tell anybody what happened. <laughs> she said, what am I supposed to tell them? I'm, I look like, tell them you tripped on a sidewalk. <laughs> you cannot tell anybody. And wouldn't you know it, when we pulled in to my house where I lived, my brother was standing there, my older brother. He walks over and goes, huh, caught you. I said, you cannot tell anybody. And then his famous line was, what's in it for me? <laughs> Believe me, I paid him dearly. Don't say anything. The point is, you don't drive until you're ready. I want us to grow up and be ready, and God hands us the keys. And we become the church that he purposed and planted in this city. We become the people of God that are just growing and making a difference and having impact. I want you to move from one to another. So whichever one you identify with today as a Christian, can we just agree what would it take to get you to the next one? What would it take to get you out of a stroller, uh, literally out of the carrier there for an infant? What, what would it take to get you from a tricycle to a bike? I'll tell you what it's going to take, and we'll give you four things. And we build everything around these four things. Number one, reading God's Word and praying. There is no greater catalytic activity for growth than reading the Bible and praying. And you know what? We want to help you. Text the word daily to 40777. And you will be signed up for every morning at 6.30 a verse comes to your phone. Now, it doesn't mean you can't read more Scripture, but it at least is a place to start. And I promise you, when you start reading this book, you're not going to stay a baby. You're going to start seeing things and understanding things, and you're going to go from a bottle to a steak. You're going to start growing. Just read and pray. And when you pray, not a laundry list. Hey, God, I'm going to need help today on this and this and this. No. Listen to him. Listen as you're reading. And just let him talk to you. That's what prayer is, communication. So that's the first thing. Second thing, worship. Learn to worship. Worship in a service. We call this the worship service. Hey, this is not a worship service. There are many who come here every weekend and never worship. Worship is a choice that you make and I make. It does not involve music always. Sometimes it does. It means I'm able to be aware of God and just thank Him and praise Him for awesome God that He is. It means when I'm driving, I'm on I-4, and all of a sudden, somebody in front of me cuts me off, I worship. <laughs> because the other alternative in that moment is not good. It's just a place everywhere we go, we ought to be aware of God. That's what worship is. It's an everyday, all-day thing. Third thing, get connected to other people. There's no such thing as the Lone Ranger in the kingdom. Even the Lone Ranger had Tonto. Come on. Everybody needs somebody. You need to get connected. We can help you do that. We have a table called the help table or the help desk. It's located right over there in that lobby. It's called Welcome Center A. All you got to do is walk up and say, you know, I'm, I'm interested in getting in a group. And they will walk you through it. And you can really ask anybody at either side, but that's why it's there. Find a group. Find some people in your neighborhood. Spend time together. And the third thing or fourth thing is this. Serve. You'll never grow more than when you're serving. I mean, you will grow so much as you begin to pour out and with the gift God has given you to start helping and serving others. We'll help you with that. You want to know how? You want to know where? Text the word SERVE, 40777. Just remember that number gets you in heaven. So just text the word 
serve 40777 and as you do and as you serve you will grow up and we will become what he had in mind when he placed us here so for just a moment I want you to bow together I want you to think where are you are you, have you found your place and who are you are you an infant are you an adolescent are you preteen I mean what who are you in Christ are you just merely human no spirituality at all Lord I'm just asking that for all of us grow us up and thank you that Lord you I, I can't I can't believe it but you want to co-labor with us you want to come beside us and you want to use us and I thank you God may we continue and forever grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, if we can help you, let us know. You can text the word connect. Literally, there's a meeting next Sunday at 1115 called Connect, and it's a place to learn about how to be connected and involved. We want to help you. If you've never trusted Christ, we can help you with that step too. That's the first step, and there's so many more to come. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful Lord's Day. Thank you for being here today.